talking about something else. <laughs> Benghazi, Benghazi, Benghazi. Why aren't we talking about somebody else? The infamous Nancy Pelosi. They're getting frustrated with the Benghazi thing. And, you know, ladies and gentlemen, that tells you one thing. They are desperately afraid of the Benghazi investigation. They don't want it. Uh, they want this buried. Uh, they're concerned about the impact on Hillary for 2016, which is a serious uh, concern. I mean, I don't know what's going to happen. A lot of it's going to depend on the media. I think if, if, if President Obama and his reputation was all that was at risk here, I don't think there would be much to fear. That I, I think the media... What I'm saying is that there would be less of a check on the media's willingness to explore this and to pursue it and to uh, talk about it and to get to the uh, the bottom of it. But what you've got to because, – because the, the, the media is uh, – they're losing – they're not enamored of President Obama uh, any longer. They, they've lost that. Uh, I've got a piece. Let me look at that. Here's, here's what I want phone calls on this, this topic – you know, we've got this investigation moving forward on Benghazi, and we have 72% of the American people want to know what happened. They want to get to the bottom of the barrel on that deal. They want to know exactly what happened in Benghazi. And I want to ask you, if you're part of that 72%, are you part of the 72% of the American people that want to get to the bottom of Benghazi? You want this investigation you want Trey Gowdy to go hammer and tongs after whoever he has to go after to get to the truth on Benghazi. Uh, let me know. Maybe you're uh, part of the 28% and you really don't care. Maybe you think this whole Benghazi thing has been hyped. It's been overblown. It's been exaggerated. Too much attention has been given to it. And you would like to see us just move on. You're like Bob Becker. We just got to move on and talk about other issues. So open to either one of those, 888 What do you want done with Benghazi. And let's grab clip number one. Uh, and this is David Rhodes. David Rhodes now is the president of CBS. This this guy is the brother of Ben Rhodes. Remember, Ben Rhodes, and I don't think David Rhodes, the guy that you're about to hear from, he's the president of CBS News. He's Cheryl Atkinson's boss. He's the one basically fired Cheryl Atkinson for getting too close to the truth on Benghazi. His brother, Ben Rhodes, is the guy that's the fiction writer that wrote the talking points for Susan Rice and deliberately said, we got to structure these talking points to blame the video and to make President Obama look bad. we got to do everything we can to keep this from looking like a failure for President Obama because we have an election to win. The truth doesn't matter. The four dead Americans don't matter. What matters is we got to make sure this guy gets reelected. This is potentially lethal. we got to pin it on the video. we got to make President Obama uh, look good. You know, and, and President Obama, knowing what he knew, went off to Las Vegas the next day, and he was out there talking about how al-Qaeda was on the run. Uh, and bin Laden is dead and celebrating as if al-Qaeda had been decimated. Well, they knew good and well that wasn't the case. This was an al-Qaeda operation. Ansar al-Sharia, they knew that. And Ben Rhodes knew that, and he wrote these talking points to cover it up. Well, this is David Rhodes. This is the brother of Ben Rhodes. I don't think he knew that Well, his brother hadn't even been involved in this thing yet because this is, this is September 12. This is the day after it happened. This is the president of CBS News. This is three days now before Susan Rice goes out there and lays all the blame off on this video. This says David Rhodes. He's speaking at the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. He stepped in for Scott Pelley, who was tied up doing a story on the unfolding uh, Benghazi catastrophe. And listen to what David Rhodes, president of CBS News, was saying the day after Benghazi. Let's listen. It's not just a spontaneous mob reaction to what some thought was an offensive film, but actually a coordinated effort tied to the 9-11 anniversary. So I said there's a really good chance, it was a little difficult to hear his internet quality audio there, but he was saying, look, there's a really good chance that this was an orchestrated militia-type attack. I forget the exact words he used, but there's a very, very good chance this was orchestrated. Uh, this wasn't just some random demonstration, uh, but this represented something far more sinister than that. It was not. This is a direct quote from it. Was, there's a good chance this was not just a spontaneous mob reaction to a film. That's the president of CBS News the day after it happened. They already knew that this thing was a terrorist uh, deal and not a movie review uh, gone bad. Let's um, grab clip number four. 
Because you've got this investigation, there's going to be a select committee formed, bipartisan. Democrats are going to be on it like Republicans. They can ask questions just like the Republicans can. And so the question is going to be, is the White House going to cooperate with them? And here is John Carl, ABC News, trying to get Jay Carney to answer that question. Are you going to cooperate with this House investigation? Let's listen. So, so I just wanted to... Do you want to ask me again? <laughs> yeah. I, 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 actually, I, I just want to direct... You're going to definitely get it out of yes. me, that's for sure. Yes. Yes or no answer. <laughs> is the White House going to cooperate with this investigation? Yes or no? I've heard a lot well, of First words, of all, I haven't I seen an answer. investigation. I've seen a lot of uh, rhetoric. I've seen talk. I've seen um, some of the usual partisan uh, uh, assertions and heard them. And what, I, what I will say is that we uh, have uh, a long history of cooperating with legitimate oversight from Congress. Uh, and that, that. cooperation that. will continue. What I I'm not going to speculate about is what, uh, you know, what the Republicans are up to. It's pretty blatantly apparent, apparent based on what they've said and what even other Republicans have said, that this is a highly partisan exercise. So as Jay Carney said in the stage, uh, hey, we're happy to cooperate with legitimate oversight from Congress. You catch that? That's a very critical word in that statement. We are, so people listen to that without, uh, without listening with a fine-tuned ear. Oh, that's great. That's Jay Carney. We have a long history of cooperating. Uh, co cooperation will continue. Isn't that wonderful? What a cooperative administration we have. He said we will cooperate with legitimate oversight from Congress. Then he uses the word partisan. These are partisan assertions. The last statement, this is a highly partisan exercise. So the Obama administration, I mean, th th they're laying the groundwork to say, no, we're not going to cooperate with this because this is not legitimate oversight. This is instead a witch hunt. Like to know what you think about you, uh, how badly you want to get to the bottom of the Benghazi thing, 888 589 You know, it's possible that uh, President Obama hired a lawyer as the general counsel for the White House because of his experience with prior scandals. On April 29, Judicial Watch announced that it had gotten the smoking gun email on April 18. That's just days before President Obama announced that Neil Eggleston would replace Kathleen Rumler as White House counsel to the president. Now, here's the key about Eggleston. He had a role in the Whitewater investigation during Bill Clinton's first term. Uh, he has ties to former White House Chief of Staff Rahm Emanuel. He got him off the hook in Illinois on a pay-to-play scheme. He nearly got snared in that same deal that got Rod uh, Blagojevich. So uh, this guy has extensive experience in dealing with scandals that are encroaching on the White House, and there's a good reason to think that President Obama hired him because he knew that this Benghazi thing was potentially lethal. Here's that uh, polling deal. A majority of the public wants to see the Benghazi investigation proceed. Only 34% don't. 51% do want it to proceed. 34% say no. 59%, according to Rasmussen, think the administration do not, does not think the administration has revealed all the details. And 72% continue to believe it's important to find out exactly what happened in the Benghazi debacle. Want to know if you agree. Let's go to the phones. Let's go to John, Lake Cloud, Michigan. John, welcome. What's on your mind? Good afternoon, Brian. Yes, John, go right ahead. Well, in a way, I did forget about Benghazi for one reason and one reason only. Seems like uh, until that came up, we refused to help any country. We refused Libya. We refused Iran. We refused Egypt and Syria. Ever since Benghazi comes up, we didn't, they didn't receive the help, what they needed to save all men. It's a tragedy. Mm -hmm. I know that. You know, and it's interesting, John, and I appreciate your call. Uh, you know, we helped these other places. That's John's point. We went to the help of these other people. We didn't in Benghazi. The military sat on its hands. Got a great piece here by Andy McCarthy, and he lays this squarely at the feet of Barack Obama, which is where it should go. Remember, we played that soundbite from retired General Lovell saying, hey, we were waiting for signals from the State Department. We didn't get any uh, uh, requests for assistance from the State Department. So here's a general sitting, uh, sitting around waiting for instructions or orders from the State Department. And Andy McCarthy says, look, I just looked at my Constitution and Article 2 
still says the same thing it has always said. This is not the State Department's job to give commands to the military. The president is the commander-in-chief. It is the solemn duty of the president, not the State Department, not Hillary Clinton, to come forward with not requests but commands for action. So his question is, what was AFRICOM doing? What were they doing sitting around waiting for Hillary to speak? Why were they showing deference to the Libyan people uh, of all people? Uh, they were the, the troops on that night were did not answer to Hillary Clinton, didn't ask the Libyan people. They answered only to uh, Barack Obama. And nobody knows where Barack Obama was. He's AWOL. Nobody has any idea what he was doing, where he was. And Andy McCarthy says, look, a commander-in-chief does not get to vote present. Over 19 months have elapsed, he says, since terrorists savagely attacked the United States in Benghazi, yet we are still waiting, ever waiting, for an account of where the president was, what he was doing, and what, if any, directives he gave during the hours and hours during which Americans are being tormented and killed. Only the president can command the, the troops and call them into action. He was AWOL. Let's go to Myra in uh, Stark, uh, Florida. Uh, Myra, welcome. What's on your mind? Myra, are you there? All right, let's grab a call from Jeff in Richmond, Virginia, if we can. Uh, Jeff, welcome. What's on your mind? Hey, Brian. First of all, thanks for the good work you do, and I'm honored to call you a brother in Christ. Thank you, sir. What you do. Uh, you know, for one thing, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that I'm in the majority opinion on a social issue, and I would love to get to the bottom of it and would love to know what happened, but in the end, I don't know that it will do any good. What's going to be the end result if we find out that we were lied to? I don't think it's going to change everything or change anything. It most certainly won't change Washington, that's the situation where it is now. I wish it would, but I don't think that the people, or I should say I don't think the media will allow the people and the people have the courage to change that administration and, and get the crooks out. I wish they would, but you know, it, in all fairness to you know Watergate and Iran-Contra, if we would cried foul, they would be laughing at us and tell us it's legitimate, and they would go right on to it, their investigation. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and, you know, yeah, and, and I, you got a good point there, and I think how this thing is going to turn out, appreciate the call, Jeff, how this thing is going to turn out is really going to be up to the media because, as I've said before, it wasn't Congress, it wasn't the law, it wasn't the Justice Department that drove Richard Nixon out of office. It was the media. If the media is determined to get to the bottom of Benghazi, then Obama is finished. If the media, because that's what they did to Nixon, if the media covers for Obama, which I think they will do in part to protect Hillary, then Jay's probably right, probably not going to go very far. Focal point, AFR Talk. With another homeschool mission,